Hello folks, this is Jamil Swift for Gunstruck Reviews. We're here in Scottsdale, Arizona at Healy Strategic with Jim Fuller. How are you doing, Jim? Doing well, sir. How are you today? Today we're going to continue our AK conversation yeah. about American-made AKs, okay? And there is all sorts of different brands and manufacturers making them, some really good, some middle of the road, and some really good ones. Now, this one is what you consider to be a middle of the road gun. It's a Palmetto State Armory, mm -hmm. AK, the PSAK GF3. Mm -hmm. uh, just to verify, it has a uh, forged... Those, I believe, have, have forged trunnions, bolts, and carriers. And carriers, and yeah. carriers, yes. I believe the GF3 and beyond all did that. Yeah. yeah. And so far, I have been lucky, you know, with this rifle. Mm -hmm. But, of course, this is not a rifle you're going to run to death. Because well, it, it's not, it's not. You know, made we, for we that. talked about this a little bit when we were talking about the mags. You know, um, there's a. It, it depends on what you need the gun for. You know, a lot of you know the PSA gets a lot of hate in the industry, and I think a lot of it was because of their AR stuff. You know, because mm -hmm. they, they put out AR stuff in the past that wasn't that had a lot of problems. I don't know nothing about that. I don't do AR stuff, but then they started putting out AK stuff. So I pay attention to anything that's AK. And uh, you know, is it is it is it as good as an original com block gun? No, it's not. And most people know that. Yep. Uh, I'm not burning them down. I'm just, it's just that these guns that you're sitting right here looking at, these guns were built by state arsenals that had, didn't have to make a profit. Mm -hmm. And they were able to do things with these guns that a company that has to make a profit may not necessarily be able to do. Mm -hmm. You know, now I don't know anything about PSA. I don't work for them. I'm not on their payroll. I know a few of the guys there. People always say, oh, you're showing for PSA because I did a video recently where I talked about one of their 105 blocks being uh -huh. probably the best available, and it is. Mm -hmm. um, there's two or three different ones on the market because you can't get the original 105 box hardly at all anymore. So, and just because I praised a PSA block, I got a lot of hate because of it. How can you praise that? They're garbage. It's like, <sighs> there's only thing going on this road. I'm a fucking American, okay? You know, and I still believe that America can make good stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, are they limited by having to make a profit? Profit? Yes, they are. But. Let me ask you a question. Those guys that have been given hate to the AK-12, you want to know why the AK-12 is not as good as the original AKs? Because it was the first gun that was put out by a Russian arsenal that was not state-sponsored. That's how it goes. Yeah, and, and here you have guns that, parts that come from the Eastern Bloc. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is mine, this one is yours. Mm -hmm. And these are also boutique guns because they're custom made. Yeah, yeah, we bought the we bought the you know the high end parts and put these things together, and uh, that's really the only way you can really get a good spec AK anymore is buying the original parts and trying to put them back together that way. Um, you know the the newer stuff that's coming out of that's coming out here in America, KUSA, PSA, the two biggest manufacturers of this stuff. Now, you know. They serve a big purpose in this industry because the majority of the people in the industry are not like us, you know? I mean, and, and I'm not even like that much anymore. You know, in my younger days, I used to go out and shoot 1,000 rounds a month easily or more, mm -hmm. you know, um, because I was at the range almost daily, at least four or five times a week, mm -hmm. you know, shooting. And I go to the range, I, I shoot two, three, four, five hundred 500 rounds at a time. You know, I don't, I don't mess around. And people that run those kind of how, round counts, they find, that, they find that some of the American guns may not hold up to that over time. You know, now I'm not running them down. I'm just talking about honesty and everybody here knows that, you know, I'm not trying to bash anybody's company or anything like that, but they're pre producing guns that they can produce at, a, at an affordable price for the average person to be able to own an AK that they can go out and enjoy. So if you want to put hate out there for that, go ahead, but understand the market, how it works and how it has to be done. The majority of the people, they don't want these guns. They want those. The majority of the AK buyers in this country, there's 10 times more of these sold than there is of these. You know, the kind of stuff we do is a very niche market. Yes. You know, it's, it it's only the guys that do a lot of shooting that want guns like this. Well, and they do competition. Sure. Like we did before. And yeah, some people, if you, if, let's say you're starting in competition, you want to shoot an AK exclusive or go to gun site, okay, mm -hmm. and take the AK class. This is a good start. You start, mm -hmm. and then later on, once you get better and, you know, you need something different, you get something bigger or better, you know, you spend some more The more money. you learn about the platform, you find out what you really need for yourself. 
That's absolutely. And, and, and like I said, the PSA guns, uh, you know, they, they get a lot of hate. It, it's funny because the PSA takes a lot more hate than KUSA does, I think, on the Internet. I see that a lot. And I don't understand because their guns are actually pretty equal in quality. You know? mm -hmm. uh, maybe the differences of how the businesses handle it. I don't deal with them because I don't, I, you know, I don't buy, I build my own guns. I don't buy guns from other people. So it's hard for me to say. I don't know what they're like to deal with. But um, I do know how the market is, and I do know what the majority of the guns are sold in this country. Sure, everybody would like to have a, five, a three, four, five thousand dollar AK, but not everybody can afford that, and yeah. not everybody needs that. No, you yeah. Know? There's a lot of people that this gun is going to serve them perfectly well, no matter what the internet thinks about it, folks. If it's a gun that's going to work for you, and it's and, and you're doing it, you're enjoying it, enjoy it. Don't let the haters beat you up over it. You no, know? and then and and now something we didn't have thirty years ago is so many aftermarket parts oh, for it. Yeah. We're talking about the Ultimac. Uh, the Ultimac, yeah, that was one of the first really solid aftermarket parts to come out for the AK. And, and to this day, it's still valid. I mean, that thing's been around for quite a while now. But you could take a standard, you know, plain Jane AK and throw an Ultimac on it which is very simple to do. You know, most people can do it, you know, in about, you know, maybe 10, 15 minutes. It doesn't take long to do it. It's not that hard to do. You just need an Allen wrench and it comes with one. Um, but right away, now you've got a place to put a red dot, a flashlight. I mean, you've, you've upgraded that gun into a really good fighting gun by just adding one little $100 part. Yeah. So that has always been a really solid addition for most any AK. And this muzzle brake that we threw in from Midwest Industries, mm -hmm. uh, simple, changing a muzzle brake yeah. Yeah. is a piece of cake. Mm -hmm. This one happened to time perfectly, and it's <laughs> some nice do, some don't. Some do, some, some don't. <laughs> yeah. But this one happened to time cool. perfectly. That's a Midwest, isn't it? Midwest yeah. Industries, yeah. It's, but the thing is, timed upside down, so the Midwest <laughs> logo is on the bottom, <laughs> and made in the USA is on the top. That's cool. But you know, hey, look, you know, this it works for me. Well, Troy, oh, there's a pretty nice guy. I've been doing, I've been dealing with him lately. I built him an AK-12 recently. He's a pretty nice guy, and he's he's he's, he's kind of a old school American, so I get yeah. that. You know? Oh yeah, he yeah, we did a video on his uh, his uh, AR, one of the mm -hmm. AR platforms he makes. And we we're making fun of it because the nomenclature was CF16-14- <laughs> da 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 da. And it's like, okay, from now on, I'm gonna call this thing the honey badger. Because <laughs> the honey badger doesn't give a shit. And because very lightweight, because mm -hmm. these things are heavy. Yeah. It doesn't matter, these things are heavy. Mm -hmm. That one is very lightweight and very compact. And it's a good, well-made, American-made. AR, if you are into ARs, hey, look, I don't mind ARs. I know, uh, I know some people in the internet that are into AKs hate ARs. And I'm like, I don't know. look, I, they're I, all fucking guns. You know, when, <laughs> when, when, when you There's need good them, ones and bad ones. Jim, yeah. when you need them, uh, and you grab whatever you have in your hand. That's yeah. the best gun in the world. Because mm -hmm. if it's gonna save your life or the life of your wife. Children, grandchildren, you know what that is, or your neighbor too. You know who cares if you like your neighbor. That is, you know, if you don't like your neighbor, you know. <laughs> so, if you even know your neighbor these days. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I, it's funny because I do know a lot of my neighbors. There's a lot of cops in my street. Yeah. So it's great people, hmm. but this is great, you know. And a lot of people are talking about how people give you hate for having a forward-mounted scout scope. It's just because you've been around long enough to know that that's a thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, and I am a big Jeff Cooper yeah. uh, fan. And, of course, being going to gun site, the scout, uh, we, we have done... Well, th gun this gun right here, every time there's a picture posted of this gun, you'll get somebody going, why is that? You got that whole rail on the back. Why do you have that scope mounted so far forward? You obviously haven't been around long enough to know why. Yeah, <laughs> and also I do have an ACOG I run on the back of this thing when I yeah. want to shoot distance, but most of the time that aim point serves just fine. Well, this aim point here is an H1. H1, yeah. That has been it's kind of old. It's been around for a mm -hmm. while. It's been in several different guns. Uh, I'm gonna try to. I don't know. The aim you, point is one of the few that'll really take the heat of the, the heat, Ultimac, though. That's, that's one. That's one negative. The Ultimac. A lot of the cheaper red dots won't last on it. It'll, they'll burn up. But that, the aim point will handle it. Some of the Hollow Sun models I've seen have done them as well. That's what Freddie Blish told me. About it, he goes, yeah. When you put um, an aim point, you put an aim point there. Don't put anything else. Anything you can put anything else there, but it's gonna fry. Yeah. And I don't know if you've seen Freddie's video on the reliability of aim point. 
He mm -hmm. has a quick, de quick detach on it. He'll take it out and throw it down range. It's an amazing little scope. And grab it, slap it back on, and still be zeroed. Yep. And it's true. Mm -hmm. I don't know. If, uh, what do you think? What do you think about quick detach on the aim points? Are they? I've never used one on my aim point. I use one on an ACOG. Uh, you know that I can run on that, and I don't have any problems with it as long as it's a good de quick detach. This, you know, mine's is an arms mount, I believe. Uh, I don't remember. Yeah, it's an arms mount, and it's, it I'm, works I'm just a, fine for that. I might, I might grab a Midwest Industries and throw it here just mm -hmm. because I can. Mm -hmm. So, hey, thanks, Jim, and thanks for your insight on American Make AKs. Sure. And like I said, guys, you know, shoot what you have, and this one for the price. Uh, for the price, it's an excellent, excellent gun. I've been praising them for a while because they are an excellent mm -hmm. gun for the price. If you can afford a custom Fuller AK, A, go for it because Jim will appreciate it and he will make <laughs> you a fantastic gun. But you know what? Stay tuned for that one. So thanks a lot, Jim. Yeah, we got to do that. <laughs> yeah. And remember, like always, re please remain healthy, stay safe, and guys, have fun at the range. Thank you for watching Gunstock Reviews. Please visit our website at www.gunstockreviews.com for more exclusive content. Please visit our Patreon page at www.patreon.com slash gunstockreviews. Your contributions would be greatly appreciated and help us grow our selections and frequency of videos.